All right. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. This is Dawn Reby from Excellence and Analytics. You are on the tribe of Excellence Peach. I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that this works. I have a new platform that I am here on. So my hope is that you can hear me <laughs> and you can see me. So I sure hope this is working. So we are, it is Thursday. It's 2 p.m. Eastern here. Um, in um, the Northeast, and we are building on our boundaries series, our boundaries series. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm using a new um, a new tool today to, to be on live. So if you can hear me, if you can see this, if you can be part of this, let me know that you are here. Let me know that you are here with us on, on this live. All right, Michelle, thank you, thank you. All right, great, you can see me and you can hear me. Phew, thank goodness, here we go. Well, here we are. We are wrapping up our session, our month-long session on boundaries. So we're wrapping the whole thing up. So we talked about, um, you know, we talked a couple things. Certainly in the past, we talked about, you know, the red flags. Hey, Gus, how are you? We talked about the red flags, right, of when we're not setting the proper boundaries. So we talked about those root causes, the root causes, in our session two of this hello sharon hello sharon hello michelle and all of you who are joining on here i'm so thankful that you're here with me today we are wrapping up our session on boundaries i'm glad that this new tool is working i'm excited i'm glad you can hear me it's a little different i see things differently so i'm i'm, I'm hoping it, it's working awesome welcome liz welcome welcome all i'm so glad you're here so we are diving in to boundaries, our last last session on boundaries. But before I do that, I just want to thank all of you who have been posting on the Rise and Analyst uh, post. So Rising and Analyst is all about really just rising each other up. We have an analyst who's going to be winning a wellness package, and you could be the person that put that gave that to them. So every month we're going to do it because I think it's that important to rise those people around us, okay? So every single month we're gonna rise an analyst. So if you haven't already posted the analyst that who you wanna rise, go ahead, let us, go, search the page for rise an analyst and you can post about them too. And we can we can hopefully select them. So I'll have my daughter select them tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, uh, yes, tomorrow. We are selecting a winner and we will have a wellness package delivered to that individual, so that analyst, awesome. So we have some cool things going on. We have our analyst pods that are going on where we meet at 10 a.m. Eastern a couple times a week and we rock out analytical functions together. We share our successes, we share our challenges, and then we rock it out Pomodoro style, which is in, in silence, right? So if you're looking for an accountability team that's gonna get you on track to perform your analytics, um, you can join us, join us. So you can search the page for pods. So I wanna make sure you have that piece with you as well. All right, so Liz, Sharon, Gus, Michelle, and the rest of you folks who are joining on, how the heck are you doing? Have you been exercising your muscles around building boundaries? Have you been exercising them? Let me know in the comment here whether you're, whether you're live or you are listening to the replay. Let me know here, have you been exercising those um, skills that you have been learning, those skills that you have been learning here? I'm just going to grab this book over here. Here we go. So during our Rising Genius call today, we were talking about some boundary implications, right? So we were talking about like what boundaries have we done a better job setting? And I have to tell you, sometimes I struggle with boundaries, um, but we were talking about something specific and I want to share this with you to see if this resonates with any of you here today. All right. Oh, good. Hey, Becky, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. Hello, hello. So. In the comments, let me know one thing that you have been doing this week to work on your boundaries, to flex those boundary muscles, because remember, it is something that we have to practice, that we learn, that we practice, right? And so I practiced today, right? So I was sharing with our Rising Genius group a little bit earlier today during our group coaching call. I was sharing with them um, that, you know, sometimes we have to listen to our bodies, right? Sometimes we have to listen to what our bodies are telling us, and we can use what our bodies are saying to us to create boundaries that really work for us. What does this look like? One example can be, what is your optimal time of day to operate? Like for me, I know that first thing in the morning, I, um, you know, I'm able to work on, on some intense project very well. So at seven o'clock in the morning, somehow my brain work, it works. There's no cobwebs, it's working really well and I can focus and rock and roll. 
come eight o'clock at night. Don't even talk to me about anything technical. My brain is shut off. <laughs> How about you guys? Are you guys night owls or are you guys morning success people? Um, Kate, uh, so Kirsten, you spoke to your lieutenant about your needs and he says he will support me in addressing and having a conversation about <gasps> boundaries with command staff. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Woohoo! We are celebrating you. We are celebrating you. You talk to your commanders about it. You talk to your lieutenant and you said, Hey, I want to create better boundaries and let's do it together. Kudos. You win the award. This is awesome. You had the conversation. Congratulations. Everyone, let's congratulate her. She did great. Sharon says, kindly saying no a lot more often. Yes, swiftly and kindly. That's right, swiftly and kindly. Yes, exactly. So for me, and, and think about your time chunking schedules. Yes, yes, I love it. Thinking about your time chunking schedules, you can use boundaries when you're designing your time chunking schedules. So many of you know that we have our peak productivity master course that's happening in a couple of weeks. Sign up. This is gonna keep you on track. This is gonna give you tools for automation, for releasing, for prioritizing. Be part of this, be part of this. If you've done this before, it's time to brush up on it. We have analysts who come every single time because they grow and they have accountability every single time. So the Peak Productivity Master Course, if you haven't seen that, go to the announcement section. There's a link to it there. You'll see it publicized all over as well. It's free. It's 100% free. So bring your other staff on board, your husbands, your wives, whatever. It'll help with all of them, right? You get a nice little booklet. And for the whole week, we have a half hour session. You apply what you learn in, in, in your own time during the next day. You do homework. The energy is wonderful. So be part of that peak productivity masterclass. You learn automation techniques. You learn how to prioritize, how to figure out what's urgent, what's not. We do brain dumps. It's really a ton of fun. So I'm excited. Michelle says, I'm a morning and night success person. Middle of the day, she's not so good. That's awesome. I love it. So Michelle needs her naps in the middle of the day. So don't mess around <laughs> between 11 and 5. I got it. I got it. Gus says, after 6, critical thinking turns off. Yes. Yes. Me too, Gus. Me too. And exactly, exactly. <laughs> I love it. So I, I'm teaching out in, in um, when I teach, right? I travel throughout the country to teach. And so sometimes they'll say, oh, we're all going out to dinner. And it's dinner will start at 7 o'clock. And I'm just like, oh, gosh, that means we actually will eat by 8 o'clock. And then that means I won't get to bed until like 11. And how the heck am I going to operate? For some people, that works great for them. For me, I like to wake up nice and early. I like to get my workout in. And I can focus at 6 a.m. on an intense project. In fact, I prefer it. Um, before this morning at 5.30 in the morning, I was completing a report. It was quiet, I was focused, and, and I like it that way. Um, come six o'clock, I'm like, do not bring crime analysis my way. My brain won't function. Can you just write it down, send it to an email, and I promise I'll, to me in an email, and I promise I'll get back to you. So when you are building out your time chunking schedule, so, because I know you're all gonna be in that peak productivity master course, right? When you're building out those schedules, you can incorporate in your intuition. You can incorporate in some boundaries. So um, how does that look? So if you know, if Michelle knows that she is best, she is absolutely on her game at 10 a.m., at 9 a.m., then she's going to schedule in her 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., the 11 a.m. time period to be her heavy-duty stuff. Maybe it's reading and analyzing at that time. Maybe it's, you know, putting her mind into some bigger picture thing that really takes some mental energy, right? Maybe, you know, um, if, if I'm not a thinker at three o'clock, I'm shut, like, don't put anything special my way. <laughs> it won't get done very well. I know that I need to revisit it in the morning. So at three o'clock, I'm not going to schedule some intensive, you know, time chunked, you know, um, um, analytics for myself, right? I'm probably going to say, well, if I'm going to do a lot of research, if I'm going to do a lot of like intensive writing, that has to happen in the morning for me. So what about you guys? What about you guys? What kind of things are you saying to yourself? Um, you know, if I did this in the morning, it would be much more effective. What we're really top talking about here, what we're really top talking about is optimizing your specific time for success, right? Your specific time for success. So how can you work with what, what you have, right? How can you optimize your time, right? 
and, and incorporate some time chunking so that it really is when you are operating well. So if someone's calling you to um, you know, a 6 a.m. meeting or a 7 a.m. meeting and you are not even awake until nine o'clock, you know you can't even function before nine o'clock, then say no, set up your boundaries. You can say, hey, um, my schedule's packed. <laughs> can we meet at, at 10.30, right? So Liz says a lot of people like to work out in the morning or at night, but I actually like to work out in the middle of the day because it helps with afternoon fatigue. Yes, I agree. Um, for, I, I'm, I'm totally with you, Liz. If I take a nice, solid power walk, like, you know, at 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm pretty good for the rest of the day. It's that sitting for a long time or that thinking for a long time, that kind of stuff just doesn't jive with my particular body, right? So what about the rest of you? Gus says, I started working out in the morning to kickstart my day and it gives you more energy. Awesome. Yeah. Like my daughter, she's 23 years old and she works out at night. She starts her workout at 9 p.m. And I'm like, what? You start your workout <laughs> at 9 p.m.? She starts her workout at 9 p.m. And I'm just like that. I just know. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not 23, right? So it doesn't work that way for me. Uh, but really think about this. So think about creating boundaries that optimize your time based on what your success strategies are, right? What works for you. So I don't want you to be afraid to do that. I want you to, you know, really look to see when can I optimize, when am I at my optimal time? And that's the time where you're going to incorporate in the stuff, right? The stuff that needs a little bit more hardcore attention. And then releasing or being able to set boundaries around you know, stuff that's not going to work. For instance, I have a, a girlfriend of mine. She loves to go to concerts, and I like to go to concerts too. But sometimes they start at 11 o'clock, and I'm like, dude, I'm just not going to survive. I'm not going to party till 3 in the morning. I'm in my whatevers, right? <laughs> and so it's not going to work for me to be up till 3 o'clock in the morning. It just won't. So what's going to work for you? That's really what you need to decide. So let's dig into the boundary checklist. We've been working really hard with boundaries. And so we're going to wrap it up this week with our checklist to see how great you've all done. And if there's other gap areas where you want to fill it in a little bit more. This is a continuously learning process. You will evolve, you will change, and you will need to revisit your boundaries, right? So we're going to walk through a boundary checklist. But before we do that, I just want to share with you what we have planned for you this summer. Many of you have been talking about, you know, I don't have processes in place. I don't have systems in place. I, I don't know how to be an effective anal analyst. I don't know how to build analytical capacity. So what we've done this summer is we've built an entire series all summer long, every single week. We're going to slice it and dice how to build analytical capacity how to develop the infrastructure for an analytical unit. We're gonna talk about policies, procedures, things to have in writing. We're gonna talk about a vision of your crime analysis unit. We are essentially creating, like a lot of people have said, Don, you've asked me to be the CEO of crime analysis, but I don't know how. I don't know how, I don't know what I should be doing. We're gonna, we're gonna walk you through that all summer long. This entire summer, we have the series committed to creating the vision, where do you wanna be in five years, exactly how to get there, right? Building the infrastructure, recruiting, retaining quality analysts, right? Um, and everything in between. So I'm excited to share that with you. So that starts in July, which is next week. <laughs> so I, I think that's real, 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 real exciting because many of you have asked, how? How do I do this? We're going to show you step by step how to do that. Awesome. So if that, if that feels good for you, if you're just like, oh my gosh, finally, I'm going to have tools to get me to, to that CEO of crime analysis. Let me know in the chat. Let me know that this is helpful for you because we're really loving and enjoying the time and energy that we're putting into this for you. Okay. So let's get to it. Boundary checklist. Who's ready? Hmm. Okay. Here are some things. Here are some things that I want you to think about when your boundaries are intact right? When your boundaries are intact, what does it look like? In a healthy relationship, your boundaries are intact. What does it look like? You have a clear preference and act upon them, right? Do you know what your preferences are? If someone says, hey, what do you want for dinner tonight? Like, do you know what your preferences are? Or are you just always like, oh, I'll just do whatever you want me to do, right? Do you know what your preferences are? If somebody says, what do you think about this? Do you know what your preferences are? Um, and do you act upon them, right? Um, all right, number two. Let's see. I'm going to 
dig down here for some of your comments. Go ahead and let me know in the chat. Let me know where you're at with this. You recognize when you're happy and when you're unhappy, right? Are you the person that recognizes like, I'm not happy or I am happy? Or, or do you not even notice how unhappy you are because you've been that unhappy for so long? You know, and someone else will come in and they'll say, you know, someone else will come in and they'll say, um, you know, what are you doing? And you're like, eh, it's not that bad. Do you hear yourself saying things like it's not that bad? Yes, pizza, always pizza. <laughs> yes, that's the choice, exactly. <laughs> and so um, when you recognize when you're happy and when you're not happy, that's a sign that your boundaries are getting healthier. Do you acknowledge moods and circumstances around you while remaining centered and, and, and living actively, right? Right? Or, or do you live reactively? Do you live your days reactively? So if the person next to you is, you know, not in a good mood, do, are you like walking on eggshells or are you just going to live your life? And you're just like, yeah, that's not my problem. That's their, their, their circus, their monkeys, their monkeys, their circus, right? So when you have healthy boundaries intact, when you have healthy relationships, um, you can acknowledge someone's mood, but you're not reacting to it. That's the difference. Boundary checklist number, whatever number we're on. Um, you do more when you're in a healthy boundary environment. You do more only when that gets you results, right? You do more only when that gets you results. Is that you? That's a good thing. So you know that you're going to put forth energy because it's going to produce results. On the other end, do you do more and more and you get far less and less? right? If you're in a place where you feel like you're constantly doing and you're not getting anything in return, that's the unhealthy place. But do you, but on the other side, a healthy relationship, a healthy boundary setter would say, I'm going to do more because I receive more in this environment, right? Okay. Do you trust your own tuition while being open to others' opinions? Or do you get, or, or are you a pushover? <laughs> Let's just say it. Are you a pushover? Can someone just tell you what to do and you're just like, mm, okay, even if you know that it doesn't feel right for you? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments over here. I see we have some comments over here on this computer, over here on this computer. Let me know how it impacts you. Are you following your own intuition while being open to other people's opinions? All right? Or do you let people just convince you all the time? Right. So when you are open to other people's opinions, but you know what's true to be you, right, what's true to you and you can follow your own intuition, intuition, following your own intuition. And this is actually I've done several leadership courses that I've attended as well as delivered. And the following the intuition is a key factor, a key characteristics of a leader when you're able to follow your own intuition. Right. So know that and recognize that. OK. You also hear me. If you can still hear me, because I haven't heard from you in, in two minutes here. So if you can still hear me, if you're still with me, if these boundaries, this checklist is, is sitting with you, right? Let me know in the comments. Just say, I'm here. So I know that someone else is here with me. <laughs> All right. Can't see anything. I'm going to plow through it. I'm going to plow through it because I'm going to think and hope and pray that you are still here. Okay. Let's see. All right, here we go. Um, so one, when you're in a, a healthy relationship and you're setting healthy boundaries, thank you, Gus, and you're setting healthy boundaries, right? Um, you live optimistically while co-working on change. Awesome, Becky, thank you. So, so can you live optimistically? Thank you, Sharon. Can you live optimistically? Can you see the positive and still recognize where the change needs to occur? Or are you only focused on that, um, you know, are, are you just wishfully thinking, oh, things someday will change? Are you thinking everyone else is going to make the change for you? Thank you, Liz. Is everyone else going to make the change for you? You're just wishing someone will do something about it? Or are you saying, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to see the positive and I'm going to do something about it, right? All right. Are you encouraged by sincere ongoing change for the better? Now here is a really, really good one. This is a really good one. And I'm gonna ask you to lean in, lean into this, lean into this, this one that I'm gonna share with you. 
when you have healthy and intact boundaries, right, you have excited interest in self-enhancing projects and hobbies. Do you find that you don't know what you like to do? Do you find that when someone says to you, what do you do? What do you like to do? You're just like, I don't know, work, right? Work, because it's something you're good at, so you do it all the time. That was me. So if that's you right now, and you're just like, oh, sugar, uh, I don't want to say anything, it's okay. We're in this together. That was me. I didn't know what else I liked to do because I didn't allow myself to do anything else. I stuck myself in a work box, and that's who I was. I was Don the Worker. And so I encourage you that if that is you too, if you're just like, geez, I, I don't know what else I like to do. I don't have any hobbies. I don't, you know, do things that, that I don't even, if someone said to you, write a list of 20 things that you would love to do, would that stump you? Would that stump you? At one point in my life, it stumped me. I'm like, I don't know, um, take my daughter, blah, 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 blah. And I was actually in a, a self-care project and, and, and through um, my friend Leanne was putting on this project where it was all about this 10 days of self-care. And she's like, Dawn, write down 20 things you want to do. And I'm like, sleep. That's what I want to do, sleep. <laughs> and she's like, no, 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 no. Like the stuff that you actually want to do. Gus, you have a lot of hobbies. Good, 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 good. And so I had a hard time figuring out what I actually enjoyed doing because I was so used to serving everyone else all the time. Right. So I didn't know. And I'm just like, all right, well, when I was younger, I used to like Zumba. I used to play basketball. And she's like, but what do you like now? What do you do now? If you had the whole day, what would you do? And it can't be sleep. Right. And so that might take a little bit of digging. And so when that transitions for you, right, when you can find joy and have hobbies, then you're deciding who you are. You're deciding what you like. And those that in, 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 inadvertently you have to create boundaries right because you're making time for yourself and for some of the things that you enjoy and love doing okay um i have a question for you can you ac appreciate feedback and distinguish it from attempts to manipulate do you know the difference between somebody manipulating you and somebody providing real quality feedback when you have a healthy boundary you can see it immediately you can see when someone else has another agenda. You can see if, um, you know, if, if someone else is just trying to flatter you so that you can you lose objectivity, right? And so are you really good at figuring out if somebody is sincere, right? Is somebody, oh, Gus, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair, Gus. What else do you like to do? That's not fair. Okay. So are you really good at distinguishing, you know, if somebody is manipulating you or if it's real quality feedback that they're giving to you, right? So you want to really zone in. And, and it comes back to intuition. It comes back to that gut feeling. It comes back to knowing your values, knowing yourself, and really being proud of that person and being able to have confidence in that person, okay? Um, are you strongly affected by someone else's yeah, you're skeptical of everyone. Yeah, yep. So this this might be an area where you can work on Gus because if you're saying to yourself, wow, everyone just, I just think everyone's manipulative. Like that, that's the other end of the spectrum. We want you to get in the middle and be able to say, you know, when I talk to Dawn, she's not trying to manipulate me. <laughs> she's trying to really provide some feedback for my benefit because she cares, right? And there's other people in your life too. I'm sure you can distinguish, all right? Um, do you act out of agreement in negotiation, right? So when you disagree with someone, do you automatically comply with them? Maybe a boss, maybe a husband or a wife. Do you automatically just comply with them? Just like, oh, I don't want to, I want to just avoid an argument. I know people who do this. I know people in my family where I'm just like, I'm like, mom, <laughs> you're, you don't agree with what he's saying. And she's like, I just want to avoid a conflict. You know, and she'll, and it's not the little things, it's the big things that she'll just let go. And I'm like, mom, no, you have a voice in your relationship, right? And so, um, you know, being able to, to act in a, in, with the context of negotiation and agreement is different than compliance. So a little bit different than compliance, right? 
So Sharon says, I am good at seeing through people. Once in a while, I get fooled. Yeah, we all get fooled. We all get fooled. So I'm going to share with you a funny story about boundaries. Now, I'm probably going to get a little bit more personal than you want me to at this point. But I'm going to share a, a, a story with you about boundaries. So a long time ago, when my 23-year-old was like five or, I don't know, maybe eight or ten. I don't know. It was just a long time ago. Um, I was dating somebody, right? And he was, an, he was an okay person. There was not like major chemistry there, but he was really nice and kind and all that fun stuff. And in front of my, we were dating for a couple of years and, and, and there was nothing wrong. It just was nothing like, like major, right? But I was like, all right, well, this is what it's supposed to be. Wrong. Um, I was compliant, compliant, not the other way around, right? So in front of my daughter, in front of my daughter, he asked me to marry him. He asked me to marry him. And I had the feeling, I was like, hell no, hell no. I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this. And I just looked at him and I'm like, what do I say? What do I say? I don't want this, but I also don't want our relationship to be over. What do I say? My daughter's here, I don't wanna disappoint her, right? I don't wanna disappoint her. I don't wanna disappoint him. I don't want to lose what we already had. So I give him a big hug and he's like, you're not saying anything. And he had his grandmother's ring remade for me. And I was like, oh my Lord, why don't we talk about this? And you know what I said? You know what I said? Can you guess what I said? I said yes. And I didn't want to. That is blurred boundaries for all of these reasons here. And I, I knew, I was just like, okay, my daughter's here. And she, uh, maybe I'll say no later. I mean, how can I, to that face and, you know, his grandmother's ring. And I knew, I knew in my heart that it was not right. I knew it. I knew it. Right. But I didn't want to disappoint. I felt guilty. Yes, Becky Sue, I felt guilty. And I, I definitely wanted to avoid conflict and I wanted to avoid losing my relationship, like all those things. But I wasn't true to myself major boundary problem. Me, not him, me, major boundary problem. And so when I became strong enough to really say, Don, you need to recognize your feelings. You need to stop worrying about hurting someone else's feelings, including my daughter. We talk about mama guilt. That was a big thing of mine, right? It, when I was able to, you know, deal with my own boundary issues, I was able to sit him down and say, I'm sorry that I said, yes, it was the wrong thing. And here's why, um, you know, and there's, there's a little bit more to it as you can imagine, but that was me. That was me breaking my boundaries. Right. And so I want to share that story with you because, you know, maybe that, maybe that happened to you, maybe not. Right. But maybe there's things in your life right now that you're saying yes to that. You truly have this feeling just like I did in my heart and my gut everywhere that it was not the right thing but you're still saying yes because you wanna avoid confrontation, because you have guilt, or whatever the reason is. And so I wanna just empower you and say that it is okay to say no, it is okay to disappoint, it is okay to have someone else a little bit upset with you when you are true to yourself, when you know yourself, when you are fully confident in yourself, in your intuition, in your own decisions, okay? Yes, exactly, exactly, Becky. Okay. Um. So, you know, this whole month has been committed to boundaries because I feel like, and, and let me know if you feel this way too, I feel like analysts are far too often, that, and that was quite a personal story for an uh, analyst thing, but here we go. You know, so I think analysts far too often say yes when they shouldn't, right? So when you're setting up your boundaries, when you're redesigning your boundary system, as you have been all month long, right? You're redesigning your boundaries. I want you to consider what you want. I want you to consider you what following your intuition. I want you to consider letting yourself feel angry, letting other people feel angry, and that's okay. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I want you to consider the end, right? Like what when you make a decision, what really is good in the long term. So, how does that feel for all of you? You guys passed the checklist? Are you kind of like I'm still teetering a little bit? Have you passed the checklist? Have you, um, you know, discovered some growth over this past month? Discovered some growth around what you've been doing? It sounds like Gus, you have. It sounds like Sharon, you have. Liz, I know you have. Becky, yes, most of you have. Whether you're here listening live 
or you're on the replay. It is so critical that you as an analyst create these boundaries. And you can think of the bigger picture boundaries like we have been doing, and you can also think about how to optimize those boundaries, like when to create the boundaries around your work environment, your home environment, when to optimize what time you have, because time is precious. Time is precious. So optimizing your time, your emotional energy, your physical energy, optimizing all of that as you create these boundaries. Yes, I think you're doing pretty good too, Gus. Yes. So starting next week, we are diving into, we've been optimizing our, our boundaries, right? Now we're gonna optimize our analytical function. We're gonna walk through step-by-step step how to build that analytical function. And this is especially great for analysts who, you know, you're the only analyst at your agency, or maybe you have just a couple of you at your agency. In fact, no, I'm not gonna say that because this would be great for analysts at larger agencies too because sometimes you have a bunch of people who just don't have a direction, right? They don't have a solid direction, solid processes in place, solid command, solid growth path, right? We're gonna walk through all of that this whole summer. We're gonna give you that, we're gonna energize you around that and, and you're gonna walk away feeling professionalized. You're gonna walk away feeling like the CEO. You're gonna walk away with systems that you can implement and put in place around data quality strategies so that you're not always cleaning the toilets, right? You're gonna walk around, you're gonna walk out of this with strategies around not only the data piece, but how to build, what, what you should be pushing out as an analyst, right? How to build systems to do that. It's gonna be great, I'm really excited about it. So Becky says, so far I've been in a position um, to apply it to personal life more than professional, but I think that's important too. Yeah, Becky, I agree. I agree that these lessons that we're learning here, these, these, this exploration that we're doing, really has a lot to do with ourselves as a whole, right? That work-life harmony piece. My hope is that some of it translates into the business world for sure, but it has to start at home. We can practice on our families, right? It has to start at home. We have to have the boundaries. You know, we have to have um, the boundaries. I'll give you a last example before we hop off. I've been trying to walk 20 miles a week, 18 to 20 miles a week. And so I've been trying to get out every morning before everyone's awake. So I'll do my yoga and then I'll get out and I'll, I'll go a few miles. And so my daughter, who's nine, you know, texts me as I'm on this walk. She's home with my older daughter. But she texts me, can you come home? I'm hungry. Right now I'm thinking to myself, I'm the mom. I should feed her. I'm thinking to myself, okay, yeah, I'm coming right home. But then I did the thing. I did the thing. And I said, mom, is on, I'm on my walk right now. I'll be back in 20 minutes. You can have a piece of fruit or, because she's not allowed to use the stove while I'm not home. Uh, even though my other daughter's home, my other daughter's sleeping. So that, so no stove time for her. So I said, you can either have an apple or have some peanut butter um, and, and Ningxia Red, which is this, this awesome, you know, um, immune booster that I give her. I said, you can have one of those three things or all of those three things. And when I get back in 20 minutes, I'll make you some pancakes. And I didn't come back. The old me would have come back and be like, oh, my baby's hungry. I got to make her something, right? But the new me is like, mm -mm, girl, I, I have a goal. My goal is the 20 miles and I'm on my walk. So you can stay and hang out. You can come on the walk with me. You can manage your own breakfast, but I'm not, I'm not deviating from my goal. So I encourage you, and that, that is personal, Becky. Yeah, yeah, that's the personal stuff, right? So I encourage you to make those strategies in your life. Practice on your kids. They won't even know what you're doing, right? So just practice on them. Practice on your husbands. Practice on your wives. Practice on your family and friends because it's all worth it. Creating the boundaries is so worth it. Life is so much better. All right, that's it for this week. I hope you all have a great rest of the week. And remember, rise an analyst. Post your analyst that you're, you're referring as an awesome analyst that you've been connected with because I want to pick someone tomorrow from the Rise an Analyst post and help rise that analyst and send them a nice little wellness package in courtesy of you electing them. So go ahead. We're going to pick one analyst. So go ahead and elect someone every single month. One analyst will be chosen. All right, you all have a great week. Continue to set those boundaries, and I'll see you all pretty soon. Bye now.